Wednesday afternoon and I'm just here in my stock room slash packing room. These are the last of the Christmas boxes to go out this week. And in fact, the last boxes to go out full stop. I've had a pile uh, go out every day this week so far. This is the smallest pile. <laughs> Um, so I am really, really glad. So once I've dropped them off the post office, I think I'm going to feel a huge weight off my shoulders this week, which is going to be great. It's really dark in here all the time, but um, it's about half past three, so it's starting to get dark and it just looks really cosy in here. Really, really cannot get it on the camera at all. It just looks terrible, but you get the idea. It looks really cosy and lots of cute pictures and things in here. I've got like a Snoopy mirror. That's terrible footage, but I just wanted to say the boxes are done. Woohoo! I can get back to normal sewing now and yeah, get on with some other Christmas project bags for my shop and um, a few other bits and pieces that I want to do for my shop because the past couple of weeks has just been nothing but box prep. So, oh, I'm glad to see the back of these. Thursday morning and I'm giving the palace a miss today. Um, yesterday I sent out the last of the Christmas boxes so I am just feeling completely frazzled right now. Although having the boxes out now is a big weight off my shoulders so the past few weeks have just been mad, absolutely mad. Like my feet haven't touched the ground. Kind of decided uh, one morning about three weeks ago that I was going to do boxes after all and then just pulled it all together really quickly. Um, one of the main reasons I could manage it as well was because I have some good contacts that I could call on to um, provide me with extra goodies for the box. Um, I won't say who they are just now. One is obviously the yarn dyer and the other is someone who supplied another little gift for the boxes. Won't say who it is otherwise it will give away what the gift is. Um, but they were fantastic and I did say, I know it's short notice, it's all my fault, please could you help me? And they did. So. Yeah, I feel like our little community all came together to help me out there, which felt really, really nice. Um, so yeah, the boxes went out yesterday. Oh, it is not the nicest of days today. It's chucking chucking it down with rain, as we would say, um, and blowing wind and just, yeah, it's not the nicest. Um, it's been really, really wet for a few days now. There are some huge puddles all over the place. I am going out in a minute. Um, I'm going to the fabric shop, so that would be nice. We're going to go and find a bit more of the Christmassy fabric that I used in the bags that I showed. I think I showed them in the last vlog or maybe the one before that, but they went down really well. So I'm going to just go and see if I can get a little bit more fabric and get some more project bags made in those. Um, going to look for a couple of other bits and pieces in the fabric shop as well. The fabric shop is not actually a fabric shop. It's a huge department store that sells everything you could possibly think of. It's brilliant. Um, and it has two fabric departments. One is like curtain fabrics and the other is called dressmaking fabrics department. And they have wool and sewing supplies and all different craft supplies. It's amazing. If I remember today, I will try and take some, uh, some do some filming. I always sort of get a bit self-conscious in there. Just feel like it's kind of obvious. And yeah, if, if you ever try and film in places, you'll know what I mean. You feel a bit self-conscious doing it. Um, although, I suppose nobody cares. Um, I've just done my hair. It always looks so good when it's just done, but my hair doesn't really hold a curl. I curl it with my straighteners. This side always sits nice. This side doesn't. I think it's because this is my left and I'm, it's probably my technique doing it on this side. Unless it is my hair, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I always like this side. By the end of the day, or by lunchtime, these curls will have kind of all fallen out. My hair will just have a very gentle wave. It doesn't ever hold the curl for long. Yeah, my hairdresser keeps doing all these things to it. He's like, oh yeah, I'll curl it this way and I'll do it this way and it'll last. And it never lasts, but it's fine, don't mind. Um, so yeah, I was just coming on to say the boxes are done and we're off out. I'm also going to pop into Aldi, get a bit of shopping. Um, I think, well the plan was to get start, started sewing on some Christmas project bags this afternoon. Um, my energy levels are just non-existent right now. 
I had um, anemia over the summer and I feel like it's come back again so one of the symptoms for that is just like extreme fatigue and I really, whew, really am feeling it right now and it's not just that I'm shattered because I've been busy or haven't slept well, it's, a, it's just a, it's a real effort to move my body to do anything so yeah def and a few other symptoms, definitely feel like the anemia's back. I cannot get a doctor's appointment to get it confirmed um, so yeah fun. Um, I have got really high strength iron tablets though. We've got these little like fruit flies in the house at the moment. Um, I think it's because it's so cold outside they just come in the house and live on the plants. Um, yeah I've got really high strength iron tablets so I'm taking those but um, yeah need to speak to the doctor. Um, right I better go out. I'm kind of procrastinating because I just can't be bothered doing anything today. Um, I have been thinking ahead about vlogmas and future vlogs and what I'm going to do. Um, I think what I need to do for my own accountability. One day we're going to pull out my whips. I'm going to fess up, show you all my whips because I've had no knitting mojo this year really um, and maybe if I pull out the whips it might come back. I do want to get back to knitting my jumper that I was making. That would be nice and all I need to do next on it is just this bit of the body and it's just knit so I need to just pull it out and go on with it but I think if we go through my whips maybe that will put me in the mood for doing some of them so that might be a video in vlogmas right so let's let's go shopping let's go
Just a minute, been looking for some help just to find myself. Yeah, been losing my focus like a thousand times before. Can't take this anymore. Cause I've been looking for something to change thoughts into motion. Been waiting way too long. Yeah, waiting just for somebody to love and to surround me and to handle my emotions. I was out waiting for something, and if I close my eyes, it's all been a waste of time. I was out driving every mile, and now if I fabric shop I've had some lunch I've come upstairs it is freezing here's what I got um look at that little stack oh so good so I got some more of this fabric everyone loved that one I got loads of comments and um, I did make a couple of bags with it so I can do some more now and I also got more of Santa in his car and I absolutely love tartan at Christmas and this one has got some metallic through it. I think I've had this one before and I saw this one as well which I really love. They would be so nice as some table mats or something. Oh, I have to make myself something at some point. They're gorgeous. Really love that one. That would make a nice project bag too. Um, and I got some of this piping cord but it will be great for drawstring cords. And I got a, a sort of khaki olive green, whatever colour you call it to try as well and um, they are really cheap at this shop so just thought I'd get some like that for example was only 30p a meter so I got 20 meters um so yeah mission accomplished on the fabric front I was hoping to get some sort of fluffy yarn like a kid silk or mohair type of thing because I am making a hat with this fabric uh, this yarn
sewing machine is playing up a little bit and the stitches are not as perfect as I would like so I've re-threaded it and it's still playing up so I've now opened it up to give it a good clean. I thought it would be really bad inside but it's not that bad. Um, I've not had my machine that long this one. I've had about 16, 17, 18 months I would say. Um, it's not as bad as I expected but I've given it a good clean. I use a, a cotton bud, I just sort of damp the end and then poke it into all the little nooks and crannies. This bit is a particularly bad bit for getting mucky because it's connected to the needle. That's the like, I don't know what you call it, needle shaft. So it goes up, it gets quite um, covered in fluff and stuff. So I've just taken out a big bit of gunk from in there. So I think that will help. And I just sort of poke my uh, cotton bud everywhere I can. I've taken off the bottom bobbin as well. Um, I'm just going to get a clean cotton bud. And give that a little clean in there the best I can. All machines are different obviously. This one um, it doesn't, that must lift out but you would have to unscrew the plate here and I'm not doing that today. But um, yeah, my last machine, you could really take all this bit apart a lot easier to clean it. Whereas this one, uh, it's all screwed in. It could do with a good clean, but I haven't really got the time today. So what else I think I'm going to do is give it a little oil as well. So I just thought you might like to see how I do that and where to put the oil. And if you've got a sewing machine, I know a lot of you will be saying, I have never opened it, I've never cleaned it, I've never oiled it. Um, so maybe now, you will do that um, and I think that some of you some of you might open it up and get a bit of a shock because they can get really filthy inside and really caked up with fluff just look like a little bird's nest in there when it gets really bad so you get sewing machine oil from your haberdashery shop um, feeling that you'll probably get some on eBay um, so I'm just going to Anywhere that the machine moves, so this little crank that I showed you earlier that goes up and down at that join there, that's the bit that goes up and down. I'm going to oil that bit, any bit that moves you want to oil. So I'm going to just put in a little bit of oil in oh, there, that's better. Not a lot, because you don't want it dripping all over your project. So give it a little squeeze. And then once you've done that, just Move it to let the oil go all the way along where it needs to be. You can see there's a something here moving. This bit moves. I'm going to oil that as well. I'm just going to try and do better for you. So you can see it moves. It's on a hinge or something or a wheel, whatever you call it. You want to just get some oil everywhere your machine moves, basically. You will get tutorials, proper tutorials on YouTube, I'm sure. I'm just giving you a really rough guide here just to give you that little bit of confidence to have a go yourself. So just look in your machine, find out on watch where it moves and that's where you want to put some oil. Um, just trying to figure out if I want it anywhere else. That's going round. That bit there is also, where am I? Can't find the end. That bit there is also going round, so I'm just going to put a little bit of oil there. You can mop up any excess with a tissue or a little scrap piece of fabric. Your machine will thank you for this. Um, and I can see it's going. Oh, I can't actually get my nozzle into that bit. I can. So another little bit. Oh, you didn't see where I put that, I don't think, but I've put it just down. Ah, sorry, this camera work is terrible. I've just put some in there. That should be better. And I think what I might do, I've taken out both threads, so I'm going to re-thread it. But what I might do is treat it to a fresh needle as well, because I haven't replaced the needle in ages. They do say that you're supposed to change a needle with every new project you do, but as you can imagine, for me, that would be a ridiculous amount of times. <laughs> so, yeah, I tend to just do it when I remember, which is not very often. Well, in fact, I do it when it plays up or when it snaps. Um, 
so yeah definitely not as often as I should but I'm going to give that a little run just with no thread in it let that oil just work its way in there we go it's having a good massage just check you haven't got any excess oil anywhere that needs wiping because you don't want it dripping down in, and um, yeah I'm going to thread it back up change that needle and get back to sewing but if you're having any problems with tension on your sewing or your stitches look a bit uneven or it's pulling or whatever then it's probably your machine telling you that something needs cleaning out quite often I do find that re-threading it does help but um, yeah at the end of the day it will need a good clean every now and then so I hope that has helped you a little bit and in case anyone is interested, my machine is a Genome and it is 5060QDC and I really, really love it. It's got a lot of fancy stitches which I don't use and you won't really need unless you're going to be playing about with them. But for general sewing, quilting, patchwork, all you really need is a straight stitch and some zigzags really. But this does buttonholes too. Lots of fancy things. It does, uh, where is it? Which one is it? I did have a really good play about when I got it. I think it's this one. Um, it does darning, so you could use that on anything that had a hole. It'd be quite cool on your jeans just to do lots of patchy bits. Um, lots of little fancy stitches, which are really sweet too. Excuse the absolutely terrible lighting in here. It's a really rainy day, but I just wanted to tell you the most amazing Christmas stamps in the world are back in stock. I used these last year for my own Christmas journal when I was selling some as well. And I've got more back in stock. These are brilliant. I reached for these stamps for like every project I did. They're so great. So we've got this set. We've got a mug and a jumper, so cute. I did some really cool things with the car as well. I'll show you what I did in my journal later on if I remember. And we've got this set here as well. Lots of words, which is great. Some snowflakes and another cute car. I can't seem to resist cars with Christmas trees on them. Some really nice ones there and foliage as well, which I always like to use. Some cute little fairy lights, which are really good to use as well. And the other set is this one. Which has got lots of text which as you know I like. That comes out lovely, it's like a fur branch. It comes out really well and then just love all the little extra ones. They're like mail aren't they? What them stamps you'd get on post. Um, but again really really useful and some music there too. So all three sets are now back in stock in my Etsy shop. I have got limited number of each so if you'd like one and you're not sure, I would suggest you just go and get it because they'll probably sell out really quick. I've got a huge stack of Christmas project bags just waiting to be finished. I'm just at the moment ironing them. Just doing this one. Can you spot my mistake? Yep. Somehow I've got the clip on the inside of the bag when it should be on the outside. Well, on that outside. don't think it really matters, but I think I will unpick it and add it to the outside because all the others have it on the outside. It's a nice tartany bag, which I just I love tartan at Christmas. So I thought it would be a beautiful one. And it's quite simple. I've left it quite a simple line and just a red sh chambray. Chambray, what do you call it? Um, but yeah, how silly of me. And I didn't even notice that when I was sewing it up. Here's a nice array of project bags, 
just ready to get top stitched and then the cords added. I love how colourful everything looks. I could never be called bland, could I? I've dug out some Christmassy fabrics from years gone by, so there are ones that you may or may not have seen before. What did I say earlier about cars and trees and just loving them? I've got another one. Yeah, obviously the fabric that I've showed you before is Santa with his car and his tree as well. And then, yeah, I've dug that one out. So cute. Kept that one quite pale, light coloured, which I also like for Christmas. And lined a couple with some tartans. Got the robins again. I had these last year. Absolutely beautiful fabric. They go great with the robins and this one that got so much love when I've showed it before. Um, I've teamed that with the tartan as well and I think it looks amazing. Love that. So I'm going to get on with those. Um, it's a very dreary day today. My windows have just steamed up because I've had the iron on. Um, fairy lights are on and it is only about 12 o'clock. So it's a really dark day. I'm going to be fighting with the light, I think, to try and take photographs, but I am going to try because they need to get done and put in my shop as soon as possible. to finally be at the stage where I'm taking photographs of everything so these are some bookmarks that I made uh, I think it was last week um, some Christmassy bookmarks because I've been fancying one for my Christmas books as well I'm still not growing to make myself one but had fun pulling out some Christmas fabrics I really like this one the little ladies doing their shopping um, but they're all lovely of course I love the Snoopy ones as well and I managed to use a bit of this um, fabric too for one They've all got really nice um, like coordinated back and fabric as well. This one's quite fun. Eat, drink and be merry. Um, yeah, they're all different, um, but they will be in my shop now as well. They're really fun to make. It's so, so pretty. These are some Christmas books that I think I must have bought myself last year because they're all brand new. And I think they were a little Christmassy treat to myself. Next up is all the project bags. I have got so, so many. By the time you see the video, they will be in my shop as well, the bookmarks. These two bags are a slightly different size to what I normally do. I just used the strip of fabric that I had left for these fabrics and it just happened to be this kind of size. So that is how the bags are coming out. Just a little bit shorter than the usual uh, size but they are almost the same width, well, a little bit. There's a standard large one is at the back. It's just a little bit smaller, um, but I think they make the perfect sort of size for like socks and stuff. I'm not sure if I've shown you that very well. I have to get some uh, knitting to put in it and show you, but it's such a good size. Yeah, just perfect for socks. Um, and there is a skein of yarn just to give the idea of the size as well. Um, so once you had that caked up, that would sit in there quite easily. And um, that is, this is a small, one of my smaller bags, which is usually like a sock bag. So it's not as wide that way, but it's taller than that one there. But 
You could use both of these for smaller projects like shawls or socks. But I really like playing about with the sizes of the bags. So they've got the really deep or the really wide base as well. Um, so they're really, really roomy. Really roomy. didn't actually end up moving the clip on this bag because I realised it would be way more hassle than it was worth so if you become the new owner of this bag just be aware there's no clip on the outside but it is on the inside which is just as handy for putting all your notions things on um, and keeping things tucked up safely in the bag. I finally cast something on and finally cast something on using this gorgeous yarn. I've showed you this before. This is by Pixie Yarns and it was dyed for me for my Christmas box last year and I got myself a, a full size skein of DK um, so I thought that I could always make socks with it but I'm not in the sock mood at the moment but I thought I'd try my hand at making a hat so I'm having a go at the Simple Pleasures hat which is a free pattern on the Pearl Soho website. Um, I cast it on already on different needles and it was too, I could just see the rib was really baggy and messy and I didn't like it. So I've cast on again with smaller needles, I think these are 3.25 or 3, I can't remember now. Um, and I'm much happier with that rib. Um, I'm still not sort of, uh, what's the word? Like, uh... Uh, I'm not, I don't know what I'm doing so much to know what size needles I need to use when the pattern tells me to use a size. I know some people automatically know that they need to go up or down a needle size. I can never remember what I need. But anyway, I'm happy with that ribbon. I'm happy with the colour. So I'm going to do a big long bit of cuff, which is then going to be long enough to be folded over. I only suit chunky hats. I don't suit nice little petite uh, thin hats and I could never wear a berry or a beanie like just the simple single layered ones I need a big thick chunky like cuff to fold back and then I need the hat the head bit of the hat to be really chunky too I just don't suit certain types of hat so um yeah I'm gonna do a big long cuff on this that can then be folded back and then when I get to the head bit I'm supposed to add in a skein or a strand of like mohair or something fluffy I have been looking for something fluffy but I can't can't find it and also I don't want to buy just one ball of yarn and then have to pay like four pound postage for it so I've been looking in the local yarn shops that we have but I haven't found anything yet so I may put out a bit of a plea uh, on Instagram see if anyone's got anything they want to swap for some fluffy yarn I would like to warm this yarn up a bit um, it's kind of almost a slight pale grey to the background rather than like a warmer beige or anything so I'm thinking it maybe needs a warmer colour of the fluffier yarn so maybe even like a pale tan or even a pink, pale pink or something just to warm it up a bit. Um, so yeah, this is where I am. I'm now at the point where I can just pick it up and knit on it which is oh so nice and that's all... I want to do I don't have to think <laughs> um casting this on was so annoying and so difficult for me because I couldn't keep track of the stitches and even by the time I started knitting a couple of rounds I realized I had the wrong number of stitches and I thought I'm not I'm not frogging it and starting it again because it's just I don't have the patience for stopping and starting and I've already started it once or twice so I'm not doing it again I managed to actually add in two more stitches so I should have the right stitch count. I do have a really big head though so I am going to be really worried that this is going to fit 
uh, until it's big enough that I can try it around my head. I have got a new addition to my shop here, a cute little ducky stitch marker and I've put him on my knitting. These are in the shop now if you'd like to, to get yourself one. I've also got here a rather yummy looking Yule log. Ah, there's the camera. A Yule log. This is by Chapel... Is it Chapel View Crafts? She makes the most edible and delicious looking polymer clay charms ever. She's so good. I've got so many of them. I was looking through her website the other day and I realised just how many of hers that I actually have. But they've all been gifts from like Christmas gifts from friends and stuff. Birthday gifts, but they're all so good. It's gotten so dark in here. It's nearly four o'clock. I've tried to get all my photos done today and any other bits of video that I want so that the next couple of days I can be uploading all the items to my Etsy shop and getting the vlog sorted for you. Um, I should actually point out also about the hat pattern that I'm doing is that the pattern um, tells you to use four ply yarn and to use two strands at the same time. I'm using DK yarn and I'm just using one strand so I'm hoping that it turns out all right. I'm hoping it should be roughly the same equivalent um, and I'm just winging it otherwise. I'm just getting some gifts ready that I'm sending off to a friend so I'm trying to be organised. I'm using just bits of scrap, scrappy paper just to make some tags up. On the other side of the brown I have printed her name um, using my printer and I've just got some music sheets here that I've just turned into tags and I'm going to put them both together so that it looks like that which I think is beautiful and I'm going to tie that onto the gift obviously I'm going to turn that over so you'll see your name um, but I have just pulled out my stamps and I thought I'd show you what I'm going to use um, at the moment so I have got a few gifts in the package but there's one for Christmas day so these are the stamps that I showed you earlier that are back in stock in the shop. So I'm going to use the one that says do not open until 25th of December here. So I've just loaded it up on my acrylic block and I've just chosen some nice green ink. And I've got some scrap card here that I'm going to do it on. I'm just going to do it down the bottom and then I can cut off a piece to make it into a little gift tag to tie around the parcel. I've got more little things here printed off sheets of music sheets um, which you can find on the internet for free uh, printed them just on brown craft paper which I love using I've used the stamp again out of the pack the first stamp um, this one here just on some stickers here to make some little fur fur tree stickers um, that one's a bit of a better one and I've just stamped various flowers and things on some sheets of sticker paper. Um, that is in my shop, this one. It's on a sheet of eucalyptus stamps and there's text. And um, I can't remember what else is on the sheets, but they're also in my shop. Um, and I've used some different packs that I've got myself that I've just got flowers in and plant pots. That's a cute set. It's got different house plants. Um, is that in my shop? That might be in my shop as well, the house plants. So there's a pilia, some other plant, a cactus, and some other plant. And I've just made um, some stickers for those. I'm going to send them to some friends as well. Um, and I've got, I can't remember if I filmed me making these ones. There's that fir tree again, the branch, and that one, is that in the pack? I can't remember if that's in one of the other packs. So many stamps. Um, the text is from the eucalyptus set and the piece and joy is from this Christmas set here that I'm uh, using just now. So just to show you how versatile stamp packs can be, um, so I'm just going to use my uh, do not open until the 25th of December one and make this tag for this parcel which I'm hoping to get sent out uh, on Friday in time for December starting next week.
Oh, that's come out perfect. I'm just going to make a few more of those because there's a few gifts that I'm doing that will require a tag saying not to open till the 25th. I have also got some small ink pads in my shop. They are this kind of size, but um, they're different colours as well. So that means you can buy different colours and um, yeah, have a play about with your stamps. I've used different colours on this one just to give you an idea of how it looks. I don't think I've got these specific colours in the shop. I can't remember what is in the shop. I do have, I'm sure there's like some sort of purples and greens like this one. And then I think the blue as well might be in the shop. Um, right, I'm going to get on with these. And then I'm just using my paper trimmer and hole punch, etc. to turn them into tags. So I'll just chop them up once they're dry. And then I've got a big hole punch here uh, to put a hole in the top and I'll tie it to my presents. Because sometimes I just don't know when to stop, I've also pulled out this little snowflake um, stamp that's in the same set. And I'm just going to stamp some snowflakes on the edge of these tags. But I just, I'm happy for them to be like hanging off. So if you put an envelope underneath just to catch any excess, and it's just going to be that kind of thing with a little um, sort of hanging off the edge, which is exactly what I want. Um, and I just need to not get too carried away. So you can see the, the beautiful snowflake. It's gorgeous, that one. I was going to show you what I did with the stamps last year. So if you saw my vlogs last year or this year, uh, you'll have seen that I've used the stamps loads. So that was the Christmas tree, the car with the Christmas tree out, one of the packs of stamps. So I cut, I stamped the stamp onto various different papers and then I cut out each different element that I wanted to use here. And I stamped it again here and I cut, uh, I glued them in on top of the stamped image. I think it looks so good. I'm just going to give you a flick through of my journal now. Love that page. Love these old fashioned Santas so much. There's the little string of lights that's in one of the packs. Sure that's in one. There's that fur, fur branch again. The deer is in one of the packs. There's the snowflake that I've just used. Oh, it's nice looking back your journal sometimes. There's the music, that's in one of them. Winter Wonderland, that's from one. These um, girly stickers are in my shop as well. So are these, these are die cuts, they're not stickers, they're just cut out bits of cardboard, but these are in my shop as well. I got some more packs in, so I think a lot of these elements are from the same pack. Yeah, these are. These will all be in the same pack. They're absolutely beautiful, and as you can see, I've just found so many uses for them in my journal. I think a lot of these bits are from the pack as well. Yeah, they're gorgeous. So I found them really useful for the journals because uh, doing it at Christmas, I felt a little bit rushed. Just meant that I could quickly go through um I would go back through my journal and then just in any gaps I would put in some of the stickers the die cuts that jumpers from the stickers as well look there's a, a photograph of my stamped image of that car that's in one of the packs and the fairy lights there there's that is a photograph of me in the middle of journaling so that's the stickers there Oh, it's so nice to look back and remember what happened this time last year. Yeah, so all oh, these are all in the pack. 
They're in one of the packs. There are three packs there. Oh, peppermint puddles. Joshua has requested we make these again this year. Who am I to argue? Oh, this, this is full of these die cuts. These are all in the packs. They're so gorgeous. Can't wait to get my Christmas mugs out again. And all of these different bits were in the packs as well and I've just put them all together. The stickers packs, that is. Uh, I think these, these were in one die pack. I don't know if they're in the same one as on the previous pages, but you get the idea anyway. Oh, so cute. These, the jumper and the hot chocolate, I think are in a pack too. This is just when I wanted to sit and play and put stickers in and stamp because there's no actual photos on these pages. I just took inspiration from the, the die cuts, like the colours, and then, yeah, I just went with it, really. Which is a good way to start, if you're not sure where to start, just pick an element and pick out some of the colours and try and match the colours in things that you have already. Like, this is just sheets of paper. And then I've got bits of book. Where's my Christmas socks from last year? Oh, I can't wait for a slice of Christmas cake. I'd love a slice of that right now. That That's one of the girls again that's in the sticker packs. That's such a nice little bit. I like that. Sometimes I look back on stuff and it's like, oh, that's quite nice. So nice to look back at and just get inspiration. Yeah, you can see I've got a packet of girly stickers and then gone through a journal and just uh, added them in. Oh, an inviting little bowl of scraps. And there we have some blank pages. I wonder if I'll uh, come back to it this year. We'd like to have the time. Chopped up my little tags. Don't forget to leave enough room at the top to punch a hole. I think they look really good. The only thing that would make them even better would be if I had used the heat embosser to do the snowflakes. But my mum has it, so can't be doing that at the moment. I'm just going to get these put into a little envelope. And I've got um, such cute paper for wrapping up a little gift. Isn't that cute? I bought this in WH Smith and I'm sure it was reduced to something silly like 40p a roll or maybe not even that. I can't remember. Ridiculously cheap. I thought I'm having that because it's adorable. I think that's turned out pretty nice. Looks really good. And my ribbony stuff is actually paper. And it's this little pack here which I got in the works. And it's like literally just paper. But it looks really good. And you could, I suppose you could use the strands individually or all together like I have. But it goes perfectly with the paper. So nice. So that, I'm glad I've got that done. There's a little handmade gift in there, so I'm going to get that all packaged up with the other items. And I can send that on Friday. So that's another job ticked off my enormous to-do list. <laughs>